Alright guys, today we're going to be doing the transmission pan gasket. Um, you can see I've got one right here. Um, this is going to be a pretty quick video because it's kind of messy and I don't want to have to touch the camera when I'm all oiled up. But uh, basically what we're going to do is we're going to undo the bolts on the bottom of the pan, um, drain it all out, uh, redo the gasket on the pan, and then put a new one on and stick it back on. And we're going to torque all the bolts down to 6 foot pounds. Don't forget 6 foot pounds. Um, one thing you're going to need is a... See if you can see it under there already. I've got me a catch right there, uh, a catch can for all the fluids that can come out. Um, I, it's going to be kind of close to a gallon, I think. I'll go ahead and put an exact number on the screen right now from when I'm done. Um, other than that, uh, let's get going. All right, so as you can see, what I've done here is I've blocked up my car. I put two jack stands on both sides. That's just because I did this last week and I didn't want it, I don't know, bending or whatever over the week. So I put two on each side. Uh, you don't have to do that if you're just doing it one time. Um, so the proper procedure for undoing the pan is we're going to start towards the back of the car and undo those bolts first. Um, basically the whole thing of this is we want kind of a controlled drain out of the pan. So we're going to let the back kind of tip down a little bit and most of the fluid should come out of there. Um, now obviously this isn't perfect. You're going to get a little bit messy. Uh, first time I did this I got, <laughs> I got pretty messy um, all down my right arm. Um, so as you can see... If you can see, as you can see right there, I've already started undoing the back of the drain pan, and I've loosened the front ones too. Um, now that's not going to, it's not going to start dripping really a whole bunch until I get a little flat blade and stick it in between there and kind of pry it a little bit. Now you want to be careful not to scratch the mating surfaces, um, but we want to crack that open a little bit once we have all the bolts loosened. So we're just going to leave the back row, um, those back ones on and then undo the rest and then just have it trip, uh, dip down and then just spill out. Um, and then once that's done, we can take the pan off fully. There's still going to be some in there because of its, uh, just because of its nature, uh, the way it's bent down like that. Um, so you want to be careful. But other than that, um, when we take it down, we should be pretty good to go. And I have pretty, pretty clean fluid in here uh, just because I just redid this. But if you don't, um, you probably want to be careful. Uh, want to wear some old clothes, um, you know, just stuff you're not afraid to get some transmission fluid on because the stuff is pretty nasty. <laughs> and here we go. We've got it off. I'll go ahead and show you underneath what it looks like and what I had to do to get it off. All right, so as you can see under here, this is what it looks like without the pan on it. So two things. We've got this one right here that holds on some lines. And then up over there, there's another kind of bracket that flips over that. So I just get a, a flat blade screwdriver and kind of just pry it out of the way. Um, mine didn't. Mine came off pretty easily, actually. Um, I'm not sure if it's hinged. I'll try to look into that. Um, it kind of. It does look like it's a hinge on the lines. So don't push too hard, but it should rotate. Um, yeah. Um, so this is what it looks like. Um, this is your. Sorry. Let me. Right here is the uh, filter. So if you're gonna be replacing your filter, you have to do undo, undo all those bolts. Um, we've got some big ones over here, and then I believe those are eight millimeters along the rest of it. Um, and then that'll uh, drop your filter right out, and you'll be all good. Um, so next what we're gonna do, <laughs> you can see the dipstick right here. Um, all right, so next what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and clean the transmission pan gasket off of both of this part and off the actual pan itself. Um, put some new gasket on um, and get a little bit of, if you have silicone, you can put some silicone on to help keep the gasket in place. Um, I'm just going to be putting a tiny little bit of RTV around it, um, just enough to stick it, not enough to put cause any bumps or anything. Um, we probably don't want that. Um, then we'll go ahead and stick it back on. Yeah. So one thing you always want to do when you get your new gasket or whatever you get, go and just look, kind of make sure it looks like it'll fit over. This looks like it'll fit. All the screw holes will fit. Um, so I got this from Rock Auto. Um, I know you've probably seen or heard me talk about them before. They really have almost everything for this car, um, which is amazing. It's 31 years old, and they have it. Um, and this was 4 bucks. Uh, so there we go. Um, these two look like they'll fit. And uh, we'll go ahead and stick this new one on and take that old one off. You can see right if you can see right here. That's what it Right there it started cracking, which is what I was kind of worried of. Um, we got a crack right there, um, some cracks right there. So this old one was rubber. Um, I put this one on 
probably like four months ago or so. Um, this new one is fiber. Um, I think the fiber is going to act a little bit better than this rubber one did. Um, I don't know why the rubber one didn't work, but uh, it, it seemed like it was cracking and I didn't want that um, because it was stemming next to all the screw holes and I didn't want any fluid leaking out, um, which I did if you've seen my previous video. Um, so, oops, sorry I wasn't in focus. Um, so there we go. We'll go ahead and uh, take this gasket off, clean it, and put the new one on. Alright guys, so when you go ahead and clean the old gasket and the gasket sealer off your pan, um, what you want to do is you want to use a plastic scraper like this for as much as you can. Um, that's because plastic isn't going to be able to scrape and scratch the metal. Now the ATF, the atom automatic transmission fluid that goes in your car, has very small molecules so it can get between the gears um, and keep it from wearing itself out. But that also means that it can get through scratches and uh, other things really well. So you want to use plastic as much as you can to get it off. And then if you have tough spots, you can get a little blade like this. Um, but notice, this blade is wider than the pan is, the edge of the pan. So this blade isn't going to um, hit it with the edge. You don't want to scratch it on the edge because that will definitely leave a mark. Um, and you want to put your thumb right in the middle like this and push evenly as you go along. That way uh, you get nice even pressure and you don't want to scratch it. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we're going to spray it with brake clean, and then we're going to put the new, uh, the new gasket on and stick it back in the car. Alright guys, so we've got the new gasket on. Um, we also put a little bit of gasket sealer just to hold it on where it is. Um, so when we go and tighten this down, we're going to want to do it in a crisscross pattern. So let me show you. Alright, it's kind of like getting a tire on. You don't want to go on one side because you want it to equally press down. So we're going to start with these two middle bolts here and here, and then we're going to go up over to this side and then down over this side, and then over here, and up over there, and then we're going to tighten each side equally, because we want it to push up and flatten perfectly on. Um, like I said, this ATV can get out very easily, so we want to be very careful. Um, but remember, this only has, uh, each of the bolts only go down to 6 foot-pounds. It's not very much, but it should be enough to hold it. Alright, let's go and do that. Alright, I apologize for not being able to film me putting it all back on and everything. I was a bit pressed for time and I had to leave. But as you can see, in this container we've got our old fluid that we drained out of the pan. Um, and that's a gallon container. We've got about three-fourths of it. And this is our new container. Um, new is relative. Um, I already used some of that. And it's got about three quarts in it, just over three quarts. So it's almost perfectly what we need. So we're going to go ahead and stick that back in. Alright, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to pull out this dipstick for the transmission. We're going to set that right here so it doesn't get dirty. There we go. We've got a funnel now, and if you have a longer funnel, it's going to make this easier. Let's stick that right in there. You're just going to pour it right through the dipstick. And one trick is, if you tilt your bottle on its side, you're going to be able to get this a lot closer. So we're going to be careful not to spill everywhere. I did that. Not fun. There we go. And we're just going to go ahead and empty this entire thing in. And if you can see, the new transmission fluid is a nice cherry red. Very saturated and nice color. The stuff that we pulled out was kind of uh, old and brown and kind of foggy. Now, what you want to know about transmission fluid is that whenever you pull the pan like what we did, we didn't get all the fluid out. Um, this car takes about 10 quarts of fluid, and I'm only putting about three back in. Um, so, uh, if you want to get all the old fluid out, you can do this a bunch of times and just dilute the old fluid. Or, what you can do is you can actually go to places and get your transmission flushed. That costs about $100, I've heard. Um, but for me, this is just fine since I've done this twice now. Um, it should be pretty decently flushed out with new, new fluid. Um, and I think we should be fine. All right, we're going to go ahead and wipe this off with our towel and stick it right back in. And there you go, guys. That's how you change out the transmission fluid into the gasket and filter if you want on your car. One more thing, guys. Before you go ahead and um, let your car off the ground or onto the ground again, off the jacks, um, what you should do is you should go ahead and start your car um, kind of let it warm up to operating temperature and shift through all of your gears. Uh, make sure you're on the brakes because you don't want it rolling anywhere. 
Um, but yeah, you want to shift all the gears, make sure you're getting all the fluid in. Um, go underneath, make sure that you're not uh, leaking anywhere, and also check the dipstick. Make sure you don't need more fluid or less fluid. Um, if you need less, um, it's kind of a hard process, so you definitely want to always kind of underestimate what you have. Um, but yeah, so definitely check for leaks. You definitely don't want to be driving down the road and have no fluid because that would be very bad and it'll ruin your transmission. But other than that, um, that's how you change your transmission. Uh, as you can see under there, um, well, you can't really, but there aren't any leaks right now for me. Um, and I can't start mine up, so it's going to be a little bit before I can actually check that. But other than that, um, you should be good to go once you got your dipstick back in. And remember, guys, if you have any questions or any clarifications you want, or if you even think I did something wrong, please go ahead and comment below. Um, and I'll definitely get back to you on that. Um, I really, really like hearing from you guys, so go ahead and do that. Um, and as always, guys, see you next time.